Let's see. Slinky. Hey, man. What's up, dude? Slinky is going to have a massive enclosure. He's the king of the camp. There'll be a waterfall here. Guys, this whole thing will be a pond. I'm blown away. I cannot believe what we're doing. Let's see. Hey there, girl. What you doing? She is a nut. I can't believe this is my backyard, guys. This is really incredible. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here. We are in the office and we are gonna do another update on the incubator because some really cool stuff's been happening. We were just looking at the little rhino iguanas, which are awesome. And then little Bobby Rubino, here he is. Bobby Rubino is one tough cookie, let me tell you. Bobby Rubino, there he is everybody. The black throat monitor, he's doing well. Eating, growing, shedding. Oh man, I love this guy. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennett. This week's special shout out goes to John Howell. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. We have a very cold day out there today. It's only about 57 degrees outside in Florida. So everybody's locked up, man. Um, but I did think it would be a good opportunity since we had a video on Tuesday, just a little while ago, um, about the eggs that were hatching. I wanna show you just what's going on and what we do with the animals once they hatch. Here is a little nursery, here's our little cherry head. And uh, you can see his yolk is being absorbed and it's just a beautiful color. We got this nice moist um, paper towel that he's been kind of hanging out on and that keeps the yolk from sticking to the plastic. Uh, which is really good because we don't want him to tear anything like that. But what I wanted to get to today was this. Um, oh, by the way, I just want to say thanks to everyone who commented. Um, I got a lot of good ideas about how to keep the flies down uh, from filter floss or putting screen over some of the holes that I have in here. That could definitely help out and I never even thought of that. So really excited, I appreciate you guys. Um, it's really cool that we have a community we can work together and help each other out. So I just wanted to say that, but check it out. So here we are just a couple days later and uh, you can see they are doing well. They are hatching out. Some of them are ready to be transferred, but we also have a little dude here who's not quite like the others. It's a baby radiated tortoise and this guy hatched out and I forgot I had these little boogers uh, ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put him in here and we're gonna also see, yep, this guy's ready to go in here as well. And I'm gonna show you what I do with these little boogers. Another cherry head, lots of cherry heads being born today. Here's a nice light colored one. He's ready to go. All right. Very good. So I wanna show you what I'm gonna do next. We're gonna leave, of course, these little guys and you can kind of see how their shells are very round like the egg. Um, and after a few days, they kind of open up. This guy is still got a little bit more to open up and you can see there's a little crease right here and their shells are very pliable. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring him out because I want these guys to do that. Um, also, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give a little soak. There's this little eye, it opened up very good. Um, I wanna soak these guys also and get them hydrated, but uh, very good stuff. Um, so I'm really excited about this. And for those of you who've never seen a tortoise egg, there's a hard outer shell, okay, like a porcelain outer shell. Then there's a leathery membrane on the inside and you can actually see how that works. See that, guys? So it's pretty interesting stuff. This guy seems to be poking out. So we've got how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight beautiful uh, cherry heads have hatched out. And then these are more um, radiated eggs. This is from the radiated tortoise. So that was a little treat. I couldn't believe it, man. I, I had no idea. Um, I forgot, you know, I didn't mark the eggs this time because I'm not really worried. I know what they are when they come popping out. Um, so we'll put this guy back in. Right there is good. And let's give everyone else a little look since we're here, just to check on everything else. Looking good, no rotten eggs, haven't seen many flies, so that's good. We did a good thing by getting rid of them and that's the one we just put in. So what I wanna do um, is let's go ahead and we're gonna soak these little dudes. I'll show you how I do that 
and you'll see some of them may drink, some of them may not, but either way, it's really a cool thing for us to do. Let's go ahead and shut this up for now, but we are gonna put those little dudes back in the incubator. So let's get my little, whoop, little flower pot thing here and we'll fill it up. Um, yeah, good times, man. This is uh, an important aspect of keeping turtles and tortoises. You gotta get them a little um, hydration, so I'm gonna make it lukewarm. There's uh, some fruity pebbles in the uh, dish, wash, dryer, dryer, sink, in the sink here. So my wife is gonna be upset if you guys see those fruity pebbles, because it's my job. Uh, I, well, she's not gonna be upset she's at me, you just would prefer I don't show you guys the fruity pebbles in the sink. Uh, and I'll go ahead and do a little dishwashing here after the video. But we're also gonna go outside and I wanna show you what's been going on with Slinky's new enclosure because man, uh, it's gonna be amazing. I've got help from my friend Jerry who has a pair, uh, not a pair, but two male black throats and he just happens to know how to build, so it's been so awesome with him. I'll, I'll talk about that when we get out there. Back in here though, we're gonna just put a little water in here for these guys. And we're gonna let them soak. Kind of clean off their shells. And you don't wanna put too much water, but we're gonna get them enough water that they'll be able to stick their heads under and drink. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back down here so that it is oh, actually more level. Um, so again, how cool is it that we got a little radiated tortoise that had popped out? Uh, beautiful little tortoises, all of them really. Uh, and these guys start out real small, but they, they do grow nicely. And look at this nice light uh, shell on this cherry head, look at that. And again, guys, the cherry heads are gonna have the black seamed plastrons. This little dude's yolk sacs being absorbed. We're gonna put them in there. I bet you that water feels really nice. So sometimes you'll see these guys just instinctively know to start drinking, um, which is uh, fantastic. Hydration's important for little baby tortoises. Um, they're small size, they dry out quick. And even though they're reptiles with scaly skin, they do need to be hydrated often. That's why these guys, when they're born, will either stay in the nest for a while, or they'll, they'll quickly find some place uh, to hide. They search out these little microclimates, and there's one of those nasty little flies that we don't like, a little gnat. Uh, but anyhow, there they are. Uh, so we're gonna let them soak up, and what we will now do is we're gonna go outside. Let's go check on slinks, because it was cold, and as you know, we don't want Slinky getting cold after last month's ordeal. Um, just pick up some of the stuff the kids left around. So let's check the pond. I had the well water running all night. Looks like the cichlids are good. It went into eh, low 50s last night. Not quite as cold as some of the other nights we had last month. But even still, it's enough to stress me out and stress out all the reptile guys here in South Florida. I know you guys up in Minnesota are laughing right now. But hey, 50 degrees is kind of cold for a reptile. So uh, we just don't want that to happen. I've been trickling water in this tub for the baby or Lydia. There they are. They're kind of sleeping down the bottom right there. And um, we've also got one right there and that's what these little guys do they're just kind of hanging out there they are so they're just kind of resting and uh what we do is i let this trickle i'm gonna kind of turn it up a little bit more and if you were to feel that water it's really nice and warm so we're gonna go ahead and let them get a bit warmer okay let's go see what's up with the slinks So I'm really excited. As I mentioned, I'm going to probably break out the bottom of this uh, so that water doesn't collect there. And I'm gonna fill it in with gravel and we're gonna bring the Cuban iguanas out to here. Um, so they'll have a plateau. I'll redecorate, do what I gotta do, make it more Cuban-esque for those guys. Let's see. Slinky, hey man, what's up dude? All right, so he's on his little, um, he's on his little heat pad. So we don't want them to come out, guys. 
So I don't want to, I don't want him to come out. Oh, he feels nice and warm. That's awesome. Very, very good. I love you, man. Now I checked last night. Of course he's doing good. So I just want to check him in the morning. Um, so I'm very happy, man. I love this lizard so much and I'm so glad that he didn't die and that he's back to life and we're going to keep an eye on him and make sure that he has no health issues due to what happened. He's had no discharge from his nose. He's not been, um, you know, he's been accepting all kinds of food and he's very alert as you can see. So Slinky is doing awesome, but I know you guys want to see what I'm up to. Okay, so let's go check that out. Um, I love bringing you guys along for the ride kind of letting you know what's going to be happening uh so in march i'm gonna we're gonna have a big party over here we're gonna have the guys from aquascape are gonna come down good old ed and greg um just man i love those guys they've done so much for me and they do such a great job with their ponds um so they're gonna build in here but let's show you what my friend jerry and i have been doing now jerry has been really helping me out. We've been collecting some freebies, which is very important. Um, if any of you guys live in Palm Beach and you have extra cinder block you don't need, let me know. I'll be really stoked. I'll come pick up cinder block. I could use it because we started creating a cinder block wall. Okay, this is our footer. And basically we're gonna go up uh, three blocks high so they'll there's going to be a cinder block wall all the way around this. And then we're going to take our wood frame, our four by four posts, and they're going to sit eight foot apart. Okay. So we're going to get them up and out of the dirt. So this cage, I want it to last for as long as possible. And whenever you have stuff in the dirt here in Florida, the soil is very acidic. It really does rot away at the wood. So Jerry recommended, Hey, look, let's do this let's get a border we'll we'll build it up it'll be awesome slinky won't be able to dig out because check it out we're actually we used the flat sides uh flat sides of the block so you know in other words we didn't use the um the hold size up for the moment and that's because with the first course we felt that this flat side would not sink into the soil uh the same way as if we did it the other way does that make sense guys am i am i actually explaining this well we wanted to put the holes uh horizontal on the first one and instead of vertical and this way it won't sink in we tamped it down we leveled it it's pretty time consuming stuff but i'm stoked so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to bend this back we're going to put like a little angle in this and this uh will mortar the wire right to the cinder block so that of course no none of the lizards can dig out uh through here slinky wouldn't fit but pinky probably could fit through those holes so we want to just make sure that that is completely dialed and escape proof we don't want any monitor lizards running around uh you know palm beach county we've already got niles down uh down around southern boulevard and we don't need any more uh, exotics in the environment so uh we're taking those precautions so anyhow guys slinky is going to have a massive enclosure okay and these vertical posts are going to stay and what we're going to do is i spoke to stuart from universal rocks and Stuart just does amazing stuff. You should really check those guys out. Um, they do large scale stuff for aquariums and zoos and so on. And they also do smaller scale stuff for your home terrarium. So you want to check them out. Go to Universal Rocks, Google them. They've got a really cool site and they can show you just what they do. But we're going to make trees. We're going to make um, tree trunks or maybe some kind of cool stone pillars. I don't know. We haven't decided yet, but I think it'll look really cool. I was actually talking to Stuart yesterday and thinking well you know Slinky's Southeast Asian maybe it'd be cool to make this the Slinky Temple huh uh, so maybe we could have some really cool um, rock work that looks like rock or pillars of a temple and kind of do the outside maybe it looks like Slinky's Temple he's the king of the camp and then in this section we're going to have our lady uh, good old uh, you know pinky she's gonna be here so when I want They'll be seeing each other every day. And when I notice that she's digging around, looking like she wants to lay eggs, I'll let Slinky in here and see if we can get some breeding, which would be very exciting. There'll be a waterfall here, okay? A bio falls from Aquascape. We're gonna excavate this area for the large pond here. Okay, these posts are coming out. So there's gonna be a large pond here. 
and we're going to pull that dirt up we're going to have a bio falls here in pinky's enclosure it'll pour out into a pond that will still be elevated okay so she'll have a pretty decent sized pond because she's a small girl she just needs to get wet and soak and kind of have a nice little watery area but then i was thinking how am i going to screen this off but still use the same exact pond and that's where good old Ed came in. He came over and he visited while he was doing something at Blake's uh, just uh, last week. And he's like, well, Kenan, he goes, we can do a pondless waterfall with the aqua blocks so that the water will disappear underground. We'll cover it with rock. We can run our wood and we can tack in our divider. However, it'll come out into a large pond here. I'm talking as big as I can go within these confines of the enclosure. So all the way around here, guys, is going to be a big pond for Slinky, and it'll be one filtered pond. She'll have, uh, it'll be the same water, but he will not be able to get into her enclosure, and she will not be able to get into his. It's really, really cool. So I wanted to kind of um, give you an idea uh, just by showing you, maybe um, we can see what they did with the uh, the pondless waterfall here or the reservoir on my recreation pond so i really want to show you this um, it's a really cool system so you guys remember the aqua blocks uh, there are these large heavy duty blocks that well last night i was running the um i was running the water so the water level's high right now but if we were to come over here and we were to dig down a little bit just like this you'll notice perhaps you will perhaps you won't it's a little murky there's actually um these milk crate like plastic cubes that create a false bottom now like i said the water level's high because i was running the um well but normally there's no water here it's just rock so think about it guys i can run a piece of wood on the bottom of this tack in my screen then we fill it in with the rock and now there's no way Slinky can dig through this or she could dig through to get the other side, yet we can connect the ponds with one pump and filter system. So really, really creative. Um, Ed is a genius. I love their ponds. And um, yeah, I can't say enough good thing about those guys. It's, it's really, really cool stuff. So um, I'm blown away. I cannot believe what we're doing. It's gonna be a lot of work. But uh, here we are in the beginning of January, and the cool thing is, is that I've got until the beginning of March to get as much as I need done uh, before the guys come to do the pond. So again, guys, this whole thing will be a pond. We'll be screened in. We're going to use our knit, our knit wire. Uh, the guys from England that have patiently been waiting for this thing to get built, uh, and they sent me the heavier duty wire. Check this out. I have a bit of a sample right here so we're going to use this heavy duty wire there's no way slinky will be able to tear through this they use this um, to kind of catch falling debris in construction construction sites they also put it under roadways to keep uh, rodents from biting through and getting under roadways so it's good stuff and if I paint it black it almost disappears which is neat so you'll be able to see through nicely so when i'm sitting on my deck here hanging out with the kids and kate we'll be able to look across and see the pond inside slinky's cage and there'll be a waterfall so from that vantage point straight across from my back patio over here i'll be able to see what's going on out here and it's just going to all flow together i can't believe this is my backyard guys this is really incredible so i just wanted to share with you the plans i'm pretty pumped on it guys i think it's going to be an amazing um kind of i wanted to do something amazing for slinky and pinky because i almost lost slinky and it was the worst feeling in the world and the fact that that lizard came back that he's so strong i just I had to do something to kind of honor him and give him the best possible space that I can do. And what was great is everybody who visits here loves Slinky and Greg and Ed were just like, we are gonna do something amazing for Slinky. So I can't thank them enough. They love my animal. They love to see these animals in the proper habitat. Let's go see what our girl is doing. Cause you guys wanna see animals, right? 
Let's see him. Let's see what she's up to. I covered her with a towel. It just helps to hold some heat in. Um, but she is probably going to be waking up here soon. Let's see. Hey there, girl. What you doing? She's, uh, she's kind of burrowed in on the uh, heat pad that's underneath her. So she's looking good. She's going to have a big enclosure, much bigger than this. Oh, that's not a furry animal, you loony. That's not furry animal. That's a towel, you dingbat. She thinks it's something furry. Are you hungry even after that cold, cold night? Do you not realize that that is not food, dude? Look at this little Looney Tunes. She is a nut. Uh, are your teeth stuck, kid? Did you see how she went after it? I think she thought it was either a uh, chick or some kind of rodent. So now she's got to just, oh, well, we, there you go. It's not for you to eat, my little love. It's not food. Anyway, there she is. What a gal. What a little beauty. Uh, hey, listen, before I go, man, I just wanted to, uh, one more time, show you something. I'm gonna show you the front pond. Um, the Sophia's pond I got in December of 2018, I believe. Here it is. It's been in my front yard. Look at how clear it is. There are our Badiger. Um, I clean this out once a, you clean it out, like literally I clean out once maybe a year and then I'll pull away I just pull away some of the pine needles and things like that. And maybe I'll open this vault up and I clean out the uh, pumps, right? And I do that maybe three times a year. That's it. Just to make sure it's unobstructed. Um, beautiful pond. It's a pond. It's a gift that someone gave me that I've always wanted. All these ponds. We're going to do something a little bit bigger than this for Slinky. And of course, I'll still let Slinky out to wander and go in the wreck pond and, you know, do his thing. But we're going to have a bigger water feature in that pond for Slinky. And I'll be able to put larger turtles in that that uh, as well. As long as they're large and Slinky can't hurt them. I mean, he can't hurt these guys. So maybe these guys will go live with Slinky in that back pond. But the reason I'm telling you this is these ponds are amazing. Uh, but just like any gift or any any mechanical thing, you've got to take care of them. So you've got to service them in order for them uh, to look this good. And I just wanted to say that it's been awesome uh, to be a part of this. I'm a true hobbyist. I love these ponds. I want as many as these guys will give me. I don't mind uh, being involved with it, seeing them grow. I like to come out and I, I trim the weeds, clean it. Uh, rearrange things, just really enjoy uh, all aspects of that aquascape lifestyle. Um, so I just wanted to shout those guys out because I think they do an amazing job. They have an amazing uh, system and they've given me just the most amazing gifts. So great guys. You know, if you got a dope car, someone gives you a car, you got to change the oil, right? Well, every couple of months, I just check out and change the oil here in the pond, man. You got to do a little bit of work in order for, you know, to have nice things. Um, so there you go. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it. I think we're, we're done. And um, yeah, I'm going to go inside. It's actually kind of chilly. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys are excited as I am for the new ponds coming in March and uh, the new habitat for Slinky. It's going to be amazing. And of course, I will film the entire process so you guys can see it. Uh, doing a lot of work around here. Thanks so much, everybody. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye.